Well, welcome to your brand new Linux desktop. It is a lot different than a regular Windows experience, but I'm going to show you the major differences and also the main common elements. For starters, you can see the big difference between having a bar at the bottom and a bar at the top. We have a taskbar right on the top right corner that contains many different applets. You are normally used to have all these icons at the bottom right, but here they're at the top. You can see the volume icon, the battery status, email notifications, which is a good new thing about Ubuntu, network status, and the language being selected for the keyboard. If you click on each one of them, you get a load of different settings that you can optimize. On the left side, you see this bar. You're not used to this unless you have some sort of little icons here at the bottom left on Windows. This time, you get a full vertical bar with the most common tools. You're wondering where's the start button? Does it have one? Well, yes, it does, but it works in a different way than Windows. In Windows, you have the famous start button that starts your Windows experience. Everything is in there. You get search, you get the list of most frequently used applications, recent documents, and settings. In Ubuntu specifically, you have the dash. You can click on this icon and it will present you the dashboard. It contains an immediate search text box that you can type on. These are the most commonly used applications, but since we've started fresh, it contains a standard set. If you want to take full advantage of the system and use it regularly, we'll start with some of the most common used applications. The first one is Thunderbird Mail. This is the famous Mozilla email client application. If I click on it, it will immediately pop it open. There you go. Thunderbird is open and it already asks you to set up a Thunderbird account, something like that. Notice where the icon is being presented in the dock on the left side. It is right here. It is active and that's why you see the colored background. So this is an email client that you can use already. I can use my existing email. In fact, if you type in your email address, for example, from Gmail, I'm assuming it will configure it automatically. And as soon as you hit the finish button on the right side, you will get all of your email. That's great. So let's close this for a second and move on to different applications. The most important application that we'll use besides the terminal is the browser. It's this one right here. You're used to it. It's Firefox. I'll teach you how to install different applications in the next lesson. But for now, let's stick to Firefox. And you see that the icon glows a little bit. It has this nice colored background and the browser is available to use. We can type in something like totsplus.com and the Tots Plus website will be displayed to us. There you go. It's starting to load. And there you go. The Tuts Plus website is correctly loaded. Let me just maximize this for a little bit. It works the very same way as in Windows. Firefox is universal in that regard, and so you won't be disappointed by the differences between websites in different systems. You will notice something. I maximized the window, and now there's no close or maximize buttons. Where are they? Well, you can see on top that we have Tots Plus Premium, the best way to learn creative and technical skills. That's the title bar, and if you hover the mouse over it, you will get the menu and those buttons I was mentioning. I can click on File and Quit to close the application. If we want to access the system settings, you can either go to the System Settings button on the left, or you can go to the dashboard, type in Settings, for example, and there you go. All of the options are available just by searching a word. And notice how we have many different things. We have the list of applications and settings, music, suggestions and references to Wikipedia and other websites. So let's go to System Settings. This is the control panel just like you see on Windows. But it's a little different and actually I prefer it. It's a lot easier to use in my opinion. You can change the appearance settings brightness and lock, language, and your devices as well, your monitor, your keyboard and mouse, and your power supply settings. 
We also have system settings like details, software and updates, time and date, and your user accounts, such as this one you're using right now. You might want to configure a separate account, for example, I don't know, for your girlfriend or your wife or your son. Let's click, for example, on appearance and change the wallpaper. I'm going to choose the Tuts Plus wallpaper. I've downloaded in the background, so I'm just going to hit the plus button to add a new wallpaper. I'm going to the download section and click on the PNG image. Notice how this is actually pretty similar to the Windows system. You get a list of common places, a list of default places like your home folder, your desktop, the top file system, and the DVD drive. You also get a list of documents, the music, pictures, videos, and downloads. These are common places that you might find very useful in your everyday life. So I'm just going to select the wallpaper, click open, and there you go. The wallpaper is automatically set and we can move on to other things that I want to explain. In the appearance tab, you can also change the window decorations. I can change the default from ambience to radiance, for example. There are many other themes that you can download on the internet, but for the purpose, I'm going to select Radiance and notice how everything changes from a dark gray to a bright white. Unlike Windows, there are many different aspects that you can change on your desktop experience. You can tweak all of these different things by choosing different themes and aspects of the desktop. So let's just go to all settings and it looks like we're good to go and move on to different things. Unlike Windows, many Linux distributions come with a set of prepackaged applications. Like you saw, we already have an email client and we also have a browser. Windows ships with the default Internet Explorer, but since Linux doesn't have a browser by default, distributions choose one by default. In this case, it is Firefox, but it could be anything else. Also, you get a word processor, a spreadsheet manager, and a presentation manager all ready for free. Ubuntu comes with a LibreOffice suite. And all of these three icons are in here. Presentations, spreadsheets, and documents. I can click on this one and it will boot up our word processor. From scratch and without installing anything, you already have a plethora of different applications to work on. If you need to write a quick document, there you go, you already have a word processor. If you need to type in a quick presentation, you have the Impress application to work on that. Okay, let's close this application and move on to, for example, music. Let's say you like to listen to music while you work. I'm going to the dashboard and I'm simply going to type in music. Oh look, there's the music player by default for Ubuntu. I'm going to click on it and Rhythmbox, which is the name of the application, will boot up and there you go. You can even use services like Last.fm or radios if you're into it. This is a fairly standard interface. It contains a play button, random and repeat features and so on. This is the playlist that you can put your music on for now, I don't have any music, but you might want to add in some musics into the playlist. Let's go to the top and you can choose the rhythm box menu and type in add music. By default, rhythm box chooses your music folder and it fetches all of the MP3 files and WAV files. Basically every audio file will come right here. You will have a full list of your songs that you can listen to every day. Okay, let's close the application and you can see that we have a notification saying that it's not playing. Ubuntu has this nifty feature that is when you go to the music icon, you get rhythm box right here and a basic set of features such as pausing and playing and skipping songs. This is great. This is a feature that Ubuntu comes with by default and proves to be very useful. You don't have to have the window always open or a shortcut to constantly pause and play. You just need to go right here and click on play or pause. Okay, so this is just a very basic set of applications that you already have. I hope you get accustomed to this kind of setup, 
I know it can be hard to change from one perspective to the other, but once you get comfortable, you won't be having any other experience that'll enjoy more. Let's move on to the next lesson where I'll teach you how to install different applications. I'll see you very soon.